In this episode, I will be visiting Chusonji Temple in Iwate Prefecture near Morioka as I reveal the significance of Fujiwara clan who developed this magnificent Buddhist temple. If you are visiting Morioka or Iwate Prefecture, this is a must visit place as it is a world heritage site. Now let's move to Iwate Prefecture. Nin -nin! We started driving from Tokyo area to Iwate Prefecture, which took about 8 hours. We directly went to Chusonji Temple. World Heritage Hiraizumi. Hiraizumi is the name of the town where Chusonji Temple is located. It is roughly 85 kilometers south from Morioka. When you arrive at the parking lot of the Chusonji Temple, you can also ask for English brochure with information on where you can visit at Hiraizumi. They also have a map and cultural and historical information of Chusonji Temple itself in English they can give out to you. After greeting Kusiti Garba or Jizo in Japanese at the entrance of the temple, you walk up the slope for a few hundred meters and you start seeing structures here and there. Chusonji Temple is a Buddhist temple developed by Fujiwara clan back in 12th century. To explain the significance of Fujiwara clan in the Japanese history, this character will be the key. My name is Benkei. I serve my master, Yoshitsune. <laughs> so why are you so angry? I'm angry at my master's older brother, Yoritomo, <laughs> for attacking us. <laughs> the legend of Musashibo Benke goes that he was an undefeatable warrior who was skilled at using seven different weapons. He collected 999 katana swords from his opponent, and then just when he was looking for his katana number 1000, he met Minamoto no Yoshitsune. Yoshitsune, trained by mysterious Tengu, Benke was no match. After being defeated, Benke served Yoshitsune until the last day of his life. Later, Yoshitsune became the wanted person by his older brother, Minamoto no Yoritomo, for receiving a bureaucratic position in the imperial court without Yoritomo's approval. Yoshitsune and Benkei relied on Fujiwara clan to escape to Hiraizumi to keep away from the pursuers his brother dispatched. While they were en route to Hiraizumi, a security guard at the checkpoint noticed Yoshitsune and started questioning whether it was him. Benke, an actor as he was, started beating up Yoshitsune as he shouted, again and again, they stop us because you look like Yoshitsune. I've had enough of you making trouble. After observing this, the security guard let them pass because he assumed a real Benke wouldn't beat up his master like that. The reason Benke and Yoshitsune could rely on Fujiwara clan was because the clan was an independent power back in 12th century from the central shogunate or the samurai government Yoritomo built. The leader of Fujiwara clan, Fujiwara no Hidehira, having an ambition to even topple the central government, planned to fight against them by having Yoshitsune as one of his generals. Soon after Yoshitsune and Benkei's arrival, Hidehira unfortunately passed away. The successor, Fujiwara no Yasuhira, in his attempt to ease tension with the central government, he beheaded Yoshitsune and Benkei and sent the heads to Yoritomo. This turned out to be a bad move as Yoritomo sent troops to attack Fujiwara clan anyway. Fujiwara clan was subjugated as a result. This is a story of Fujiwara clan who developed Chusonji Temple. The clan was prosperous enough to put up a fight with the central government of Japan at the time. 
As such, they were also able to build and expand the rich cultural site like Chusonji Temple. The famous haiku poet Matsuo Basho left a haiku on the golden hall which reads Samidare no furi no koshite ya hikari do Rain in May has not fully dropped on the shining hall With only 17 syllables, he was able to picturize how shiny the golden hall was by making a reference to how shiny it was when the sun shines between clouds when it's about to stop raining while also implying how sad he was that he had to leave the place so soon In Japanese culture, Shinto, the local Japanese religion, and Buddhism, the imported religion from India, are both practiced by most people. In here, despite Chusonji Temple being a Buddhist institution, a Shintoist shrine literally is built right next to it. Because there was a dry artificial turf placed in the middle of the aisle to the shrine, everybody including the local Japanese people were walking in the middle. This is an improper way to walk the aisle in a shrine because the middle is reserved for enshrined gods. I chose to walk the soggy side of the aisle because I didn't want to be disrespectful to gods. This is a no theater. After the original theater was burned down in 1849, it was rebuilt in 1853 by the ruler of Oshu, Date Yoshikuni, who was a descendant of Date Masamune. Masamune was one of the last samurais to surrender to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who united all of Japan in 16th century to put an end to Sengoku period or the Warring States period. Even after the unification by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Date Masamune always had an ambition to topple the ruler of Japan to become the ruler himself, but he had to hide his ambition because he didn't want Toyotomi clan to be suspicious. In 1591, as a gesture of obedience, Date Masamune invited Toyotomi Hidetsugu, the ruler of Japan then, to see no play performed in this theater. Ever since then, every year on August 14th, they perform no play at this location. If you'd like to see the no play, you can contact Hiraizumi Tourism Association to ask about the ticket information. We left Chusonji Temple to head to a soba noodle place nearby. We went to Ando, near Ichinoseki Station. This place had the best score among the soba places in the neighborhood, according to a Japanese ranking website we looked at. Chicken, chicken soba. Oh, let me see. Their soba is said to be Towari soba, or literally translated 100% buckwheat. What they mean by that is they do not mix flour to make the soba, 
but use only the powder made from buckwheat seed. If you are looking for a pure 100% soba, look for towari soba. The soba was really tasty, but also the classical looking buckwheat powder machine was also very entertaining to watch. In the machine, the buckwheat seeds are ground, swept, and sent to the plastic basket underneath. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you in the next one.